plugged the abs on that one. Dang. Guys, I'm Where, Where's Justin? Just? Justin? Justin? Yeah, that looks busy, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I just lost five pounds. All right. Way to go. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want your hands, man? Uh, yeah. Look at the abs on this chick. I was just okay. This guy, look. We are PFT, and you're watching WGST on YouTube. Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGSTV right here on YouTube.com slash RustGamer and ZFXTV. I'm Double B, Billy Butro, being joined by the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, which can be heard every Wednesday night on blogtalkradio.com slash Hardcore Wrestling Radio. It's the Illuminous One, the Shining Star, Rick Star. Rick, how are you doing? I'm doing alright as always, Billy, and uh, I'm getting ready to roll. Yeah, we're getting ready to talk about Friday Night Smackdown for the week of November 30th. 2012 and guys I just want to bring up something real quick here you know maybe it's just a little nonsense nonsensical thing here but at the time of this recording it's December 1st we're in December where is 2012 gone hopefully it goes a little bit faster because you know the holidays uh, you know once they get gone I'll be glad when 2013 gets here that's just me we open up Friday Night Smackdown this week with John Cena making yet another appearance on Friday Night Smackdown. Uh, Cena cut a really great promo, again, addressing the situation with him and Dolph Ziggler. And, you know, he was here to watch that the fact that Shane, Sheamus was in a match with uh, said Dolph Ziggler. And then out comes Alberto Del Rio, starts cutting a promo. And then next, you know, uh, we got a match set up. And uh, Josh, I got to call Josh Matthews out on being a bad commentator because honestly if i had the, the option of listening to michael cole's commentary and josh matthews commentary i'm going with michael cole josh matthews just he screwed up so much on his play i wouldn't even call it play by play josh matthews is really a color commentator at best and that's what he did he just color commentated throughout the entire show jbl pretty much had to carry him on commentary, and then me, me being have being commentated with four years experience, I can tell when someone's screwing up. And Josh Matthews Rick was screwing up very, very badly. Yeah, I th I, I, I can see where he was uh, botching a little bit here and there. Um, but you know what though, I'm gonna give Josh Matthews a little bit more credit where credits due. Um, they're just this is what his really first year, solid year out commentating. I don't think we've seen him any really anywhere else where they've said, "Okay, fine, giving him the ball." The first, no, actually, the first year, stars. first year he was on uh, WWE Superstars. Okay, but that really wasn't aired on television, so that was on the network. Okay, so we'll see. We'll give him a second year then. Um, so even still, given that, I think he's doing a little bit better than a lot of people are giving him credit for. That's just me, and I understand you being as a commentator are probably, you know, could be a little bit more critiquing them a little bit more better, so to speak. And I can understand that, so... Well, I yeah, think here's one of my major gripes. You're leading up into a commercial where the, the matchup's supposed to happen next. Josh Matthews uh, segues into the commercial like this. John Cena versus Alberto Durio right now, next, after the break. Yeah, he, 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 like I said, I'm not... I'm not knocking you because you definitely do have some legitimate points. He does definitely, he is definitely still green. So he definitely does need some more work. But you know what? It's, you know, he's definitely better than Booker T. So um, I, I would rather listen to him. I think he's moving up. And I think he's going to, over the years, he'll be getting better and better. So Scott just Stanford is better than Booker T, and that's not saying much. This um, is true. This is true. Nonetheless, no, okay. I still think he's doing a, a, a fairly okay job for a, for a, a newer um, commentator. That's just my. That's just personally, you know, my own, you know, my own stuff. So, now, moving on. On to the matchup in itself. When you have two main eventers like John Cena and Alberto Del Rio open your show, it's it's good and bad. And here's why, you know, because we've seen it time in and time out. 
when you open your show with a great match, a lot of a lot a lot of the times fans expect to kind of stay on that ride, but they realize it's rapidly gonna fail soon after. But I'm not gonna fault WWE for having a great opening match when you switch Cena and Del Rio, two of their main event players of sorts. In the WWE, um, they had a fantastic rivalry over the championship. They had a, a lot of great matches, and this match was really good. Um, the finish, I loved. You know, they did the top rope leg drop, uh, or top rope famouser in a sense. Um, Cena to Alberto Del Rio. Cena gets the pin, and lo and behold, the match is over. Um, I'm going to go four out of five on this one. I thought the match was great. The promo before the, sh uh, the match was also really good. So, I'm going to give it to Cena Del Rio for a great opening match, Rick. Yeah, you know what? I'll agree with you. Four out of five. It was definitely opening, the, this opening segment. The match itself was absolutely great. And again, I have to agree with you. It was, it was steadily declined from there. Yeah, considering the next match. The next match, it's Great Colleen versus David Otunga. Why? That's all I can say is why. I mean, um, what was the point? There was no point. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I think they only gave one small point because who was the winner here? Great Kali. Kali. That was his only match. Yeah. Because since he's been back, that's the only match he's won. Oh, yeah, you got so, a point. And I think they were just trying to give say, okay, Kali can win a match. Of course, it's against nobody like Otunga, but he can win a match. So. Well, you know what? Uh, hasn't he won a match already against Ever Otunga before? I, I think... It was like a couple of weeks ago on a, a few weeks ago on SmackDown when David Otunga was like kind of volunteering his, surf his services and Booker T put him in a match against the returning champion and they announced it was the Great Kali and Kali won that match. I might have missed that match and if I did, I did miss it. As I recall, the only one who came back was when he uh, he came against the Big Show and I didn't see him since then. But okay, I did remember that call that match, so I'll take your word for it. Three out of five at best on Kali beating David Otunga. I mean. You know, like I said, it, it, it kind of fell short of my expectations. You know, their previous encounter was a little bit more entertaining than this one. Um, next up, we had a great, great six-man tag match with Kofi Kingston and Team Hell No taking on Wade Barrett and the primetime players. WWE kind of gelling two storylines into one here, in a sense. You know, we had Kofi Kingston and Wade Barrett going to be feuding over the Intercontinental title. And a possibility of the primetime players going after Team Hell No for the tag team titles. But uh, I thought it was, was a great match. I thought it was very entertaining, Rick. Well, what were your thoughts about it? Um, again, I have to agree with you. The quality of the match was excellent. But another thing that we have that we did see is Team Hell No actually starting to get along. We're seeing Daniel Bryan... Um, turning from becoming a, from a heel to a face to of sorts. And this actually was on the... Um, on the, on the church from this came from uh, Monday Night Raw when he came to save Kane from the attacking of the Shield. Yeah. So, um, do we think this is gonna? You know, I thought that eventually these two were gonna split up. Can we see now Team Hell No sticking together a little bit longer? Possibly, possibly, but I don't know if this is also a coincidence or not. But with the first Daniel Bryan T-shirt I bought, it was the Yes, Yes, Yes one, and that's when he immediately changed his gimmick into going with No, No, No. This past week on Monday Night Raw, I finally had the opportunity to get the Daniel Bryan No 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 shirt, and now it looks like Dan they're turning Daniel Bryan back into a face and having him go yes, yes, yes again. I, I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, man, but it's just plain freaky that I buy the dude's merchandise and they immediately change his gimmick. Um, yeah! <laughs> But uh, the finish came with a choke slam to, I believe it was Darren Young, if I'm not mistaken. And they, then Daniel Bryan gets tagged in, does the uh, Benoit, I'm going to call it the Benoit head drop, uh, the headbutt. I don't care what anyone else says. It's the Benoit headbutt. Yes, it is. And then he follows it up with the no lock or possibly turning into the yes lock. That kind of brings me up another thing. When Michael Cole was calling it the yes lock at Survivor Series, was that a spoiler? I think it might have been. I think he, 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 he I think he botched that a little bit. I think he said, "Whoops!" He, he might let the cat out of the bag. This ma um, this matchup. You also got to think about what, another thing, Rick, about Team Hell No. Normally, we see them do se their own entrances, separate entrances. They came out together. That was another thing I did notice. Four out, four out of five on this six man tag, Rick. I'll agree with you there. 
Next up, we had Damian Sandow. Damian Sandow says he's going to be changing his, his strategy in a sense. You know, he's still going to be the intellectual savior of the masses, but he's going to be, you know, trying to save everybody one person at a time. So he picks out one person in a crowd wearing a, a, a CM Punk shirt. I must say that the dude is probably no taller than Ring Mysterio. Um, then he starts asking him, like, you know, ask like two easy questions, like how many wheels on a bicycle and how many years uh, do we hold a presidential election? Then he starts to ask him a ridiculous question, like what is the orbital velocity of Jupiter's moon? And of course, nobody's going to know that right off the hand. And then uh, Damien Sandow starts saying, you know, this person's an embarrassment to Louisiana. Uh, Damien Sandow, you know, if, if I, you know, I'm probably going to risk the. Uh, run the risk of offending somebody uh, out there, but Damien Sandow, you know, you want to embarrass someone from Louisiana, fuck you. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say about that. Now, this matchup, Damien Sandow take it on Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd, even in a, a jobbing effort, can still make someone look really good, and he did that, in fact, with Damien Sandow. I mean, a lot of great high-impact stuff. You know, Tyson Kidd always knows how to throw a really good and mean stiff kick, Rick, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do like Tyson Kidd. Um, he's a great, great wrestler. One way or another, like he can take bumps, um, and he can, like you said, can throw a match and uh, you know win or lose. He's a great, great competitor. He's, he's a great wrestler. Um, one thing I did notice about uh, him: did you notice he was not wearing his traditional tag team gear? Yeah, it's but I will, I will bring, it, br I will bring this be, up. Uh, I will bring this up because you you weren't going to mention that on. Okay. Uh, Okay. Now, normally, I don't watch Saturday Morning Slam, but this morning, there was nothing else on. And uh, there was a tag team match in there featuring the Usos taking on Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel. And in that match, he did have his tag team gear. Okay. Fair enough. So, but uh, the finish came when Tyson Kidd went for the springboard elbow drop. It got... Uh, Damien Sandow actually countered it by bringing up his knees, elbows to the knees. Ugh. That's kind of painful if you think about it. And then he gets the win with his neck breaker. And, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on the pronunciation of it. Um, they said it's Latin. It means the end. But uh, uh, terminus or something? something to terminus, that yes. That's pronunciation. So, Damien Sandow gets the win. Um, I'm going to give uh, give this match the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to, instead of just giving it a flat score, I'm going to give it an above average score. I'm going to go 3.5 out of 5. That's a fair score. It was a great match, and I am a big fan of uh, Damien Sandow. So go ahead. And and Tyson Kidd, for that matter, because like I said, you know he makes a matchup look good even when he's losing, and he did that. In fact, with uh, Sandow, I mean, he threw some really mean kicks. I remember one spot um, he had Sandow uh, chest first against the, uh, the in the corner, and he was able to deliver a mean-looking enziguri to the back of Damien Sandow's head. I mean it. It was just absolutely awesome to see. I'll tell you that. That's why I'm a fan of Tyson Kidd because he, you know, he does a lot of good high flying stuff, just like Justin Gabriel, and he can really throw a mean kick. Um, next up, we had a tag match. The Usos. When's the last time, Rick? I gotta ask you. Uh, when's the last time we actually saw legitimately the Usos as a tag team on Friday Night SmackDown? Um, I haven't seen the Usos in God knows how long. I was about to say who are the Usos. Yeah, Jimmy and Jay <laughs> Uso, uh, the uh, son of the uh, legendary master of the stink face, and that is Rakishi. And they were taking on the 3MB in the form of Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal. Uh, Ouch. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you, I thought Heath Slater was just bad enough with the one-man band, and I thought, oh my god, you need to drop it. So what do they do? They don't drop the gimmick. They add to the gimmick. Maybe and, you know. Maybe they figure they have the three MB more more as a, a comedic element in a sense. Yeah, but you know we've seen in the past really comedic elements don't really help. I mean they just uh, you know it, it, it only gets their, their career so far, and then after a while they're just a joke and they get fall to the wayside. I mean let's look at Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder. He had his little height. He had his little height early in the year where he kind of did a few great bumps with Kane, and then after that, what happened again? Back to the wayside. He did that great uh, angle with Eve, John Cena. Again, now he's, you know, pretty much nothing. As long as you're a comedic thing, you're only gonna get so far in this career and in, in, in this business. I don't care. You're never gonna get to the very top. You're never gonna get to a John Cena or CM Punk. 
Well, WWE must see something in, in 3MB because they had them go over on the Usos in this matchup. So, I, I'm just confused. I'm just going to say 2 out of 5 on this one because I really didn't see the point. Yeah, I agree with you there. That's, uh, that's about the right. Yeah. You know, 2 out of 5. Main event this week featured Sheamus taking on Dolph Ziggler. This was a really, really good match. I said it on, on Monday Night Raw for the Raw review. Sheamus and Antonio Cesario, it was a very good, very strong match. And Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler was even better than that. I mean, I was thoroughly entertained. I thought this was a phenomenal match. Oh, and I just remembered to uh, realize to mention something. Uh, earlier, after the first match with Cena and Alberto Del Rio, Cena was on the stage, and out from nowhere, Dolph Ziggler uh, appears and knocks Cena out with the Money in the Bank briefcase. I figured I'd just bring that up real quick. But this was a phenomenal match. But, you know, we didn't get the opportunity to see a clean finish because somebody must have screamed, free lunch, and Big Show comes running out to the ring. And uh, next thing you know, Sheamus and Big Show start going at it. And then Cena comes out because Ziggler and uh, Big Show were uh, double teaming on Sheamus. And Cena comes out to make the save. Um, Dolph Ziggler gets the attitude adjustment for his troubles. And Big Show gets double shoulder blocked um, to the outside. Rick, I hate to point out the obvious, but, you know, I did it in Survivor Series when they hinted about the chairs match with Sheamus and Big Show. And now I think WWE is hinting at something again, po a possible main event for next week's SmackDown. Shane yep. and John Cena to take on Dolph Ziggler and The Big Show. Oh yeah, I, I was I, I saw that. I'm like, oh my god, the, the, yeah, you, you 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 hit the nail right on the head. And I'm just sorry. I'm like, yeah, tag team, tag team, tag team. Why don't they just say it? I'm like, you know, wow, there's a tag team next week. What you know what I mean? Or how did the team come out? It. Or have Booker T come out and make the announcement since he is the general manager. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I don't see the point of having uh, Booker T there anymore. Because Booker T just, all he says is, Yo, dog, don't be messing up my match, dog. And that's all he does. And I think that's that the only thing he says. And is, isn't that the only time we saw him when, was really, when he was uh, confronting John Cena? Yeah, that's it. He didn't come out and say, Alright, next week I'm going to make the double team. At least if he did that, it would be so uh, At least it wouldn't be so bad. But where it's like, you know... They're going to be like, and now next week. Yeah, no kidding. We know this. Maybe that's why they're just not even bothering anymore, making the match, you know, setting the matches up. Because it's like, yeah, it's not needed. You know? Now, if it wasn't for that predictable ending for, you know, the obvious ending, I should say, for a tag team match for next week's SmackDown, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5, but i got to drop it a half a notch and go to 4. Uh, I'm going to drop it a little bit more than that. i got to give it a it's a 3.5, just because of the predictability. Um, so, you know, if it wasn't so predictable, it wasn't so obvious, or at least if they had made the announcement, I would have gone to the 4. The match itself was a great match. The predictability was just, it's too tongue-in-cheek. The WWE is really, really getting really bad. It's just, oh, it's yeah. monotonous. Overall score on Friday Night SmackDown this week gets a 3.5 out of 5 for me. Um, the opening promo and match with Cena and Burrow Del Rio was a great way to start out the show. Um, disappointed with Greg Colley and David Otunga, um, but you know they picked it right back up with the six-man tag with Kofi Kingston and Team Hell No t uh, defeating Wade Barrett and the primetime players. Damian Sandow and Tyson Kidd, again, like I've already stated, Tyson Kidd can make anyone look good in a losing effort, and he definitely, definitely shined with Damian Sandow. 3MB and the Usos can be a headache. And uh, Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler, match content was great. Ending, obvious, predictable, and just kind of brought it down a little bit. So that's why it gets a 3.5 out of 5 uh, from me. Rick, what about you? Um, I, I'll just echo the same thing you just said. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. So what we want to know from you guys out there, and the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Friday Night Smackdown this week. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Um, Rick, what you got coming up on Hardcore Wrestling Radio for fans to look forward to? Well, uh, next week we're going to be talking about some... Uh, right now we are, we're going to talk about, you know, Martha Hart is, of course, is back in the news. We're going to be talking about her. Um, Hulk Hogan, he's got a little bit of stuff in the news. We're going to be talking about him. Of course, Smackdown... We're talking about Triple H, and uh, whether Triple H is how he's controlling SmackDown, how Vince is uh, 
more controlling Raw, and a lot of, you know, we want to talk about um, whether Triple H is really doing a good job, and that's going to be a lot of things we're going to talk about. And I got a few other things, gonna, you know, of course, Raw is always going to be on the table, and, uh, you know, who else shows up? And, you know, with hardcore wrestling, you never know what we're going to talk about. So be sure to tune in to blogtalkradio.com slash hardcore wrestling radio every Wednesday night and light it up with Rick Starr and the guys, courtesy of Double B, Billy Boutro. Also, don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash wrestlegamer and youtube.com slash TV network. So for the illuminous one, the shining star, Rick Starr, I'm Double B, Billy Boutro, saying, why can't AJ Lee grab my ass and kiss me?